In this session, we are discussing another three types of keys. So, they are the foreign keys, partial keys and we are having the secondary keys. In our earlier discussion, in the earlier video, we have discussed uh, different types of keys, four different types of keys that is the super key, candidate key, primary key and alternate key. And we have discussed that in case of primary key using those attributes which are taking participation in the construction of the primary key, we can uniquely identify a respective entity in an entity set. And also we discussed that in case of student, we are having one primary key that is the class section roll number. So now in this case, in the schema, we can mark in this way that is we are putting this class section and roll number underlined to indicate that they are forming the primary key. And this primary key, those attributes which will be taking part in the primary key will be known as the prime attributes or key attributes. So, class section roll number, they have been underlined. So, they are the key attributes or prime attributes and rest remaining attributes will be known as the non-key or non-prime attributes. So, that is why it is called the prime attributes or key attributes and rest attributes will be called as non-prime attributes. So, that is the main scenario. Okay. Now, let us come to the foreign key at first. Now, consider this particular uh, table that is the uh, one schema that is the department. You can also consider it as a table with two headings and multiple values under that. So, here I have considered them as one schema. So, department is one schema which is having department number and department name. Logical description of a database is known as a schema. We have discussed that one earlier. So, now in this case for each and every department, I am just putting underline to department number because using this department number, I can uniquely identify each and every department. Say D1 physics, D2 chemistry, D3 computer science, D4 uh, say biology in this way we are having this particular attributes are there and then respective department names are there. Good. Now, that is one table another relation or another schema that is the teacher. This teacher is having 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 attributes are there and to identify each and every teacher this teacher number that is the TNO will be the prime attribute will be the primary key. You know that a primary key can also be constructed using multiple attributes or it can be constructed using a single attribute. So, this is our T, TNO will be the respective attribute. Now, see this department number is also appearing here, but this department number is a non prime attribute. Department number is a prime attribute in case of department, but this department number which is a non prime attribute in the respective teacher table because under the same department number we will be having multiple teachers. So, using department number I cannot identify each and every entity in this particular teacher entity set. So, I cannot identify each and every record if you consider teacher as a table each and every record against that department number because department number will not be unique for all the records. Why? Because against the same department number we are having multiple teacher numbers. So, that is why department, department number is a non prime attribute here. So, prime attribute in one table, if it is a non prime attribute in the second table, then in the second table where it is non prime, there it will be called as a foreign key. So, here we are having this prime attribute, but here it is a non prime attribute. Then in the second table where it is non prime, there it will be called as a foreign key. So, that is our foreign key. Okay. Next, this particular foreign key will have one domain constraint. That means, let us suppose here we are having four departments D1, D2, D3, D4, physics, chemistry, computer and biology whatever I have told. Okay. So, you cannot put any teacher number with the name and age against the department number which is not belonging to this department number domain. So, this particular department number is having four values. So, they are D1, D2, D3 and D4. So, this department number can have only one of the four values. So, domain constraint we have discussed domain in the earlier video. So, set of values or pool of values from where we can pick up one value to instantiate one attribute is known as a domain we have discussed that one. So, 
this department number cannot have any value other than this d1 d2 d3 d4 so always remember whenever you are getting some foreign key you are getting a domain constraint on that so that is known as the foreign key we have discussed that one okay our next topic is the partial key please come to this table employee here employee number is the prime attribute or primary key and employee name age and sex are there now see in the department dependent we are having employee number the same employee number dependent name and the relation so let us suppose that is one employee number is e1 so in this particular uh, against this particular schema there will be one table so this e1 say rajesh 30 mel so that is one uh, record is there entity is there so now here you see this e1 aroti mother e1 sudhir father e1 say agnibo son so now you see what is happening you are getting same e1 is coming thrice Depart dependent names are coming as mother father son and this uh, sorry dependent names are coming as i have told and then this relation is there mother father and son so in this way you are getting so you cannot expect any primary key here you cannot expect any primary key here because e is occur e1 is occurring for multiple number of times so in that case we can say that this empno is a partial key because if you consider empno and if you consider one value say e1 then it's true that you are not getting a single record from this particular table you are not getting a single record from this particular table but you can feel that you will be getting a bunch of records bunch of tuples from this respective uh, depart dependent table and those tuples are related through this particular emp number that is e1 so e1 this EM, uh, EMP number cannot identify each and every record or tuple uniquely that is true but it can select a bunch of tuples which are related to each other. So that is why this EMPNO in this particular dependent uh, table will be known as the partial key. So for each and every schema you can consider one table you can write the values there. I have written only the schemas but you can also consider the respective table for your better understanding. The last one is the secondary key. This secondary key is actually required for indexing. Let us suppose after reaching to the library, I want to find books against the subject, say against the subject computer network, which books are available in the library. That means I am searching on the book subject, okay. Say against the particular author, I want to search books that how many books are there against this particular author's name. So you require one catalog where author's name will be find will be found as index. So let us suppose you want to find one book against the title. So here you see in the book we are having multiple attributes are there. Out of them sometimes you are searching on author's name, sometimes you are searching on book title, sometimes you are searching on book subject. So on this particular three attributes, I must be having separate catalogs in the library so that I can search accordingly. So author's index, book titles index and the subject index. So for the faster searching, I require separate indexing on them and those attributes which will be used for the indexing for the better searching performances will be known as the secondary key. So author's name might be one secondary key when you are doing the indexing on the author's name. Similarly, subject name can be the secondary key if you are doing the searching and indexing on this subject name and so on. So that is why you have in this way you have discussed what is the foreign key that is prime attribute in one table if it is a non prime attribute in another table then in the second table where it is non prime there it will be called as a foreign key and foreign key invites domain constraint. Next one is the partial key using that attribute I cannot identify each and every record uniquely but using that attribute I can select a bunch of related tuples from the table. So there is a partial key and indexing or the secondary key will be required for the indexing purpose for the better faster searching. 
Thanks for watching this video.